in this in this lesson we're going to review the lagging analyst add-in in belt analyst we're going to assume here at the beginning that you're already familiar with the belt analyst program and uh, and all the uh, conventional uh, requirements for conventional conveyor um, what we're going to do in this particular lesson is look at the friction coefficient and do a more detailed analysis of what's happening at the interface between the uh, pulley and the drive and how the torque is being transmitted through the lagging. Lagging analyst is a uh, uh, relatively uh, new feature to the to belt analyst and and we do consider it to be a uh, very new technology and that uh, uh, please use it as such and uh, we think it gives you um, good information uh, but uh, you need to be uh, uh, pretty cer certain about uh, your uh, what you're doing so don't uh, necessarily uh, accept it as 100% uh, gospel but use it as a tool to help you uh, determine your lagging uh, gauge and thickness so what we're going to do here first is uh, click on add-ins and uh, we're going to click on lagging analyst we have the rest of the conveyor already designed and now we're going to check the lagging um, first we can put we can pick uh, any drive pulley uh, typically it's the secondary drive pulley where we might have a, a chance of uh, slipping so we're going to uh, uh, look at that drive pulley first thing it's going to do is uh, save that uh, save some data in a new file a lagging file with the same name as uh, the existing uh, file that we're working on. It takes a couple of minutes to uh, load this module up, so you need to be patient. When it does load up, you'll see a new module. It's actually a new screen that looks something like this and uh, the data has been brought over and the first calculation has been done. There is an FEA solver in the background. We'll go over the, uh, the, uh, what's going on in that in a minute after we get done looking at the program. The general properties of the drive has been brought over from belt analysts, the T1 and T2 tensions, the effective tension, and the belt modulus, the, uh, the gauge of the belt, the gauge of the rubber cover that's, uh, that's against the drive pulley, the durometer of the rubber, and uh, based on the durometer, a uh, elastic uh, uh, e, co e and G, which is a stress and, and shear uh, modulus, is uh, calculated for that rubber. These are uh, very general uh, values here that have been defaulted based on the uh, uh, durometer of the rubber. Here's the pulley diameter in this particular application, and we have 215 degree arc of contact. I can show you the uh, the drive arrangement here. Uh, it looks something like this in this particular example, and we're looking at uh, secondary drive pulley, uh, this one right here. Come back to uh, lagging analyst. Uh, that data, the stuff in blue here, can be modified if you want to look at uh, as various options. Uh, the things in black are uh, can be changed. The next icon in here is the lagging itself, so we can put in the rubber durometer of the lagging, and uh, and again the uh, the E the the modulus in stress and strain. E is modulus in stress, and G is in strain. Uh, those are calculated based on the on the uh, rubber durometer. The overall thickness of the lagging, the uh, the uh, grooving, the spacing between the grooves in the uh, primary section the uh, width of the grooves and uh, the groove depth all these factors here we can input and we're trying to uh, um, to, to uh, build a model that looks like what our lagging is that we actually are purchasing and putting on this on this uh, on this pulley in this case it's just sectional rubber lagging if it's just smooth lagging we can uncheck that box uh, we have sectional rubber lagging in this case so we have uh, number of grooves here, uh, spacing of secondary grooves, uh, width of the 
secondary grooves. Um, anyway, we can put whatever data in here we want to put. And uh, we don't have any ceramic tiles in this particular case, so we're going to leave it here. And we're going to hit the calculate button. There's a little FEA solver in the back that's calculating the, uh, the uh, stiffness of this uh, configuration of lagging. And uh, if we look over here, the results have been, have been uh, output. And we have a graphic over here on the right. And we'll explain that here quickly. First off, as the belt enters the uh, pulley, we have that on the zero degree wrap angle here is where the belt enters the pulley and it goes around the pulley until we exit the pulley at 215 degree wrap angle. The uh, blue line here represents the uh, coefficient of fi friction that would be required between the lagging and the belt surface uh, to, per to uh, uh, the coefficient of friction would be required for it not to be slipping. And you can see here, since we have rubber on rubber, we've put a limit at uh, 0.7, coefficient of friction of 0.7, and that's, that's changeable over here if you'd like to change that. In this case, we put a limit of 0.7, so when the required coefficient of friction exceeds the uh, limit of 0.7, you see here that we, we show a red line, which indicates a local slip zone. A local slip zone that doesn't mean the belt slipping bodily and smoking on the pulley but that there's local movement between the lagging and the belt in this case 20.8 uh, percent of the wrap angle is in a, a local slip mode or 44.8 degrees this is not necessarily bad and it's very common to have some slip zone on your on your pulley and that's why uh, rubber lagging wears eventually over time the bigger the slip zone, the more the more wear that you, the more rapid that wear would be. Um, and you can see here if I change this lagging gauge from 15 to 25 uh, millimeters and and maybe soften it a little bit, make the lagging more flexible. Redo the calculation, and you can see that slip zone is reduced a little bit. Um, the uh, box right down here below the graphic uh, shows the uh, tension required, the T2 tension. That would be the T2 tension over here, um, which is shown at 25.3 right now. It's saying if you uh, wanted to prevent full slip uh, based on the Euler equation, a traditional equation for conveyor designers, you'd only need 15.7 uh, kilonewtons to uh, prevent full slip. But if you wanted to eliminate all of this uh, local slip here completely, the T2 would have to be doubled to 58.6. And again, we're not saying that you need to necessarily do that. Um, the idea here is to just minimize this as much as possible. There's a, another button up here beside calculate which says uh, str shear stress. If we click on that, you can actually see the calculation of shear stresses uh, in the rubber. And this would be an indication of uh, if the shear stress has got too high, uh, there's a potential of uh, ripping the, the lagging off. Um, that's not a big concern unless you get into really, really big drives. Um, but at this point, uh, you can see the actual uh, uh, bottom line here is the average shear stress. And the uh, top line here, the lighter line, is the, is the actual surface area um, stress. So there's gaps in there, so the stress is in the and the actual lugs or, or uh, grooves or um, rubber lugs themselves is a little higher than the average. And the red is out here is in the, is in the slip zone itself. So once you reach that slip zone, those stresses uh, decrease. And if we click on the friction button, we can go back to the uh, friction utilization chart. Um, the uh, big reason for this calculator is that there's a lot of people that use ceramic lagging these days and so if we slip, slip, click on the ceramic lagging button you can see here a little different picture and we can uh, we can create uh, some ceramic tiles and uh, again uh, we can put in some data here that that represents uh, what our ceramic lagging might look like if I recalculate see a couple things happen first of all the the, the limit for our coefficient of friction is increased now to uh, to one, 
and uh, that's because the, uh, the little dimples on the ceramic lag can give you some mechanical uh, 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 increased coefficient of friction so we've raised that limit to one and you can see here now that the uh, required uh, or the local slip zone has actually decreased significantly down to just eight degrees. Uh, the thing that we have to be careful about here is that uh, since ceramic tiles will rub, will wear the bottom cover of the belt, we would like to make sure that if we're using ceramic tiles that we eliminate that slip zone completely. Um, otherwise we're going to prematurely wear the bottom cover of the belt. So in this case there would be uh, there would be some potential belt cover wear. This is not unusual in fabric belt applications because of the elasticity of the fabric belt. And so we'd like everybody to be aware that this is a possibility. I'm going to go back and uh, do the same thing here on, uh, on uh, drive number one. There is a much higher uh, T2 tension on drive number one. So uh, we'll see if we actually have any any slip in drive number one. And it's coming back to the 12 millimeter lagging. And uh, so we have to kind of reset this thing up with the proper data. And uh, you can see here, even with uh, rubber on rubber lagging, if we put in a uh, 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 proper thickness of lagging with enough thickness and we can re probably eliminate all the slip uh, prob possibilities in uh, in the rubber on rubber lagging and uh, we'll try uh, ceramics as well and you can see that there's uh, on this primary pulley there's really no particular uh, possibility of uh, slipping on that primary pulley with even with ceramic or rubber